I'm a great fan of Jean-Paul Sartre, and he never said that the social ills and social challenges of South Africa are best addressed by private-public partnership and co collaboration between civil society and government. And I'm sure if he thought about it, he would have. <laughs> so collaborate simply means working together. Design is a little bit more complicated. And in 18th century France, with the explosion of art, the French came up with two words for design. And I call them design with a capital D, meaning intention, and design with a small d, meaning drawing. Design with a capital D relates to purpose, and design with a small d merely serves purpose. So I wanted to use some examples. And I think in 1485, but the slide is too small to read from here, Leonardo da Vinci dreamed of flying, building a flying machine. So that was his design with a capital D, to fly. His design as drawn didn't work. And this is a typical failure of design with a small d failing to serve design with a big d. Clearly he intended and dreamed about this machine flying. Unfortunately, his design failed. I am designed and born to collaborate. My body is designed with a small d and does collaborate. If you look at body, my brain has been formed to deal with particular social skills in particular areas. And those skills develop over time from infancy to adulthood. And I think there's absolutely no doubt that we're designed to collaborate as human beings. Our eyes are meant to see and our ears are meant to hear. And, and on a fundamental and very basic level, a failure to collaborate will end in our extinction. So I was very lucky to be born into a family that taught me values as opposed to dogma, that created the space to become an independent thinker and encouraged me to be self-reliant. A typical example of this was, I suppose in grade one, maybe grade two, when I got my first homework book and very proudly trotted home to mom and said, hey mom, I've got homework. And the teacher says, you must sign here. She said, give me that book. And she took the book and she signed it for the entire year and handed it back to me. <laughs> it's, your, it's your baby, kid. I'm not involved. Anyway, I think also that my, my education in law taught me to think about law for what it enables as opposed to what it prohibits. And I think maybe my very short career in law itself kind of kept me on that path of thinking about law for what it enables as opposed to what it prohibits. I then worked for various invest uh, in investment banks, um, and this is where I started getting the kind of input which led me to understand collaboration better. The third bank that I worked for was particularly good at teaching and instilling in its staff the importance of purpose. They say, this is what we're here to serve. That's the purpose, and that's what we're here to serve. And they made the distinction between process on the one hand and purpose. And I think probably most importantly was a little phrase they put out there all the time. And it was a very simple thing. And it said, the deal is king, and everyone serves the king. It's helped in my life in so many different ways, and probably most importantly around the area of small d design and big d design and the fact that small d design always has to serve big d design and if it fails to do that it's a malfunctioning system i worked in venture capital fund for the last 10 years and i think that that just brought home to me about how much i love taking an idea to commercial fruition and i got into social investment kind of by accident i've been doing some work in um, I suppose in the climate change area and designing a financial model for the mass rollout of solar water heaters in Nelson Mandela Bay. And this kind of takes us through a, a typical collaboration. I met an NGO and we started talking about what they were doing and they were busy designing a business plan 
for a project called the Kuyasa project. They talked about how they were handling it and how they were developing this business plan that they'd been doing for the last six months. And we had quite different ideas about it because we came from such different backgrounds. Them from an NGO type background and a do-gooder background, me from a strictly commercial background. So we had complementary skills and resources. The important thing is that we both shared the belief that the Kuyasa project was a project that had to be done. It had been languishing in the kind of bureaucracy of the local government for a long time and they were now finally employed to write a business plan with a budget from national government. They were going ahead with it, but we had very different approaches. But we had this common purpose. And we managed, by collaborating with each other, even from our different backgrounds, and perhaps because of it, to reach the common purpose, and we reached our goal, essentially. So the goal was, and what we finally did, was we did the Kuyasa CDM project. The Kuyasa CDM project was to install solar water heaters onto existing houses in Kailicha, 2,309 of them, insulated ceilings in the same houses, and it was really a climate change project. To step back a bit, the challenge that we faced within, um, with, with this NGO is that their business plan had come up with a budget of 48 million rand, and the amount available from government was half that. And I spent a long time thinking about it at least 24 hours, and came back and talked to them about an alternative business plan that they could submit. And because of our collaboration and because of our common goal, we submitted an alternative business plan. What essentially happened is the business plan got submitted, the political process was done, and then it was lost in the bureaucracy for a whole long time. Um, and when it was finally, when it finally came out of the bureaucracy, there was an unbelievably impossible deadline to meet. And that really was the challenge given a period of two weeks within which to submit an incredibly complex business plan, forms like this, and I'm, a complete, I'm completely not a form person. And uh, I, I managed to then assemble a team of people that were slightly better at me than filling in forms, and we, we met that deadline, and within two weeks, we'd come up with a plan to implement the project within the, uh, within the budget. It was accepted, and it benefited an enormous amount of people in a way that we thought it would, which would be to reduce the energy consumption of their homes, to make it more efficient, um, and to combat climate change. What happened, though, was a surprising thing. By the time we'd sort of got halfway through the process of installing these solar water heaters and ceilings, we got a visit from the sisters from the local clinic in Kuyasa. And they came to us and said, what are you doing here? So we explained to them what our project was about, and we took them around, showed them a couple of the houses. We said, but why do you ask? And they said, because our attendance at the clinic has dropped by 50%. A 50% drop at attendance at the clinic. And we knew the reason. These houses were practically swimming pools. They were so damp before. And with our insulated ceilings that we installed, the damp problem went away. So respiratory diseases, which are the biggest diseases and, and, and biggest social problem faced by that community, essentially, just disappeared overnight. And so, in the space of two weeks, we were able to take that initial benefit that we thought we'd get and increase it by even more. Surprisingly, people came to us and said, we are proud of our houses for the first time. You restored our dignity. Stuff that used to make my, my co-implementers and I actually just get all teary-eyed. As my daughter says, your eyes are getting watery, Dad. Just to illustrate graphically, we took two weeks to put this, together this project. It had this enormous benefit and Fantastic impact and surprising impact on top of it. Government took an equivalent of six months to do the same thing, which is that many periods of two weeks. And it's kind of a lost opportunity. And the lost opportunity comes about by exchanging the Ds around and allowing the small D to control. And instead of the small D serving the big D, the small D becoming a, a purpose in itself. What should happen is we look at Da Vinci's drawing. He had a design. His design didn't serve the big D or his intention. And so there was an iterative process. And they looked at the design. They said, hold on, the, the design with a small D is not serving the design with a big D, which is the purpose. And so we have to change something. And over time, of course, we did change something. And today we have airplanes taking off every two minutes or two seconds or wherever, all around the world. And it becomes a complete system and is a whole system. In order to have successful collaboration, the single most important thing is commonality of purpose. It doesn't matter what your background is or whether you have a common religion or you share family or whatever. 
As long as you're serving the big D, the purpose, the intention, it flattens out whatever hierarchical structure you've got because everyone, well, remember this back from my merchant banking days, the deal is king and everyone serves the deal. And that takes that hierarchy and it just completely flattens it out to serve the purpose. My wish is, in order to achieve proper social change, is that we have a collaboration between civil society and government, which, and a government that truly understands that to serve the process is to go around in circles, and that if you're serving the process only, you're missing the point because the big D is what you really want to be serving, and the process must serve that big D. Thank you very much. Thank you.